Hi everyone and welcome back. Um, what are we up to this week? Well, we're going to look at making some very cheap, quick terrain for your D&D table. So, things like this. It's an experiment with some new materials, so let's see how we get on. Let's crack on and get to the table. Right, so the material we're working with is this packing stuff. This is the spongy stuff you get in packing. The nice thing about this, it's really easy to cut. So it goes straight through, no problem. Try that way. I've cut a few pieces up, so I've literally just cut a length. These are slightly grand scale. Cut the windows. When you're cutting the windows, obviously you're nice wider, just shove it straight through. Don't worry about cutting in either side at the bottoms because we're going to cover all this up and you won't notice it. So there you can see it's a little slip. So, to cover that, I'm going to use some florist crepe paper. This stuff is dirt cheap. That has a lovely texture already on it. So what we need to know is the rough size. So, there you go. Try and keep it square. And the crease down it, and then I grab a pair of scissors. Right, once we cut our paper to size, we just start coating the piece with PVA. Give it a good coat, try and avoid getting any lumps in the PVA so it's a nice little smooth coat all over it. So let's just work around. It takes a bit of working. Lay your paper out and then push it down. Give it a tap. So one side's done, so now I'm working on the top. Exactly the same again. Just give it a good coat. So we've got the bit there we cut down just to give it a bit more shape to the top. You could actually cut the corner off the top slightly to give it more of a worn edge. But this was a test piece. So now we're just working around the other side. And you can see I just put the holes in the windows because obviously I can see where they are at this stage. I'll show you how to do the other side afterwards. So coat it up, fold it over and give it a rub down. So it's all coated. Now we do the ends. So I've just cut the ends. I've just literally cut to the corners. Give the end a coat of PVA. Fold the top end down first. And then, well, oh, a little bit too much there. Just trim the paper back. There you go. Fold the other end in. And repeat with the other bottom edge in a minute. So you fold it all up so it's covered. Trim it if needed. And you can use a glue or the brush or a wet brush to help put it all together if needs be. And there you go, that's the end done. Obviously, you got the other end to do. When it comes to the door, where we folded all the paper in, because we just slit up through the door, put various slits in, fold it all round, but you end up with a little gap in the middle. So just cut a piece of paper, make sure the grain's running the right way, put some PVA in and work a strip into the middle. This hole through the other side, so I know where I'm going. So what I'll do is I'll put my fingers either side of it and push it through. Right, after we've sliced it, we fold the paper back and we just put some glue around inside the window and start pushing the paper down. Um, it's just a bit tricky, so we'll talk about a better way around that later on. As you can see, I've sometimes got a bit of glue on the brush to just help push it down. It did go in the end. I've exposed white in the windows. I just grabbed some burnt umber paint and just worked it in covering up all the white inside the windows. I'm just working some burnt umber around the windows and I start giving it an uh, overbrush in places just to break up the monotone colour of the brown paper to add a little bit more character. Um, give it a smudge with the finger here and there to smudge it in. It just breaks up this flat colour and when we get the vines and the dry brush on it, it'll help it pop. So, just that little bit makes a difference. Right, we're just going to grab some cream paint, work it into the bristles of the brush and then work it out again. So you've got a very light loaded brush and just give it a dry brush working across the grain so it picks up and it just helps break it all up. And then just work around your whole piece doing this inside. You can also add some burnt umber inside the door which I did just to darken up a little bit. Right, we grab some cheap tacky glue or PVA work just as well. This is some um, tacky glue from the works, about two quid. But the bottle has a lovely nozzle for doing things like this for drawing out. So as you see, I just draw out some vines. And then I'm grabbing some two tone 
foam flock and just covering over the glue, working it with my finger, just tap it where it's needed just to make sure it sticks down. Um, at this point I did discover the paint in the windows was still wet and some of the foam stuck inside the windows, which actually looked really good. So if your windows were dry, I'd probably say put a little bit of PVA in there so the foam flock catches inside the windows. If you're happy with the flock, I'll just give it a tap off. I didn't even let it dry to be honest because it holds quite well. Um, anywhere, just need a little nudge, just give it a nudge. Anything you find stuck in there, like the normal cat hair, just pick it out. Um, well, there you have it. Overall, I'm quite happy with that piece. Um, a few little bits I'd do differently, as I learnt along the way. I'd paint the windows first before putting the paper on. So the brush doesn't catch any of the paper if it's still slightly wet and pull it back up and you end up pushing it back in and this goes on, um, so to speak. So just make life easy for yourself. Um, great thing with this paper, it actually turned out to be more durable than I thought it would be. So you could put it on, let it dry fully and you could really dry brush the hell out of it and it wouldn't rip. It's quite surprising and it would mean you can get some more colours into it. You could also crease the paper a little bit more in places running along the length of the walls to give just a bit more variance in texture. The glue, first time I used that glue from the works, it's meant to be a tacky glue, I should have left it to go tacky, but I always find I can never see the thing when it dries tacky. So I just used it straight on and wiped the flock on, and to be honest it worked absolutely fine, so I'm happy with that. If you found this video useful, please give it a like, um, please share, subscribe, um, don't forget the competition running up to the end of February 2018, I'll stick a link at the end. And I'll also stick a link to some other great channels out there. So please share the subs and support all these great little channels that are upcoming. And we'll see you all next week, I hope. Take care. Cheers. Once we cut our piece roughly to size, I haven't cut the windows or anything. Oh, I'll pick this brush again. To pin, it, to pin it down actually. Oh. I know, boys.